Let's talk about the Apple M1 Pro and M1 Max battery life when you're using all Pro application and how long will the battery last? Let's find out together. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Let's start out with the test system that I've used to run this battery test. So there are five of them. Two of them are 16 inch. One is the M1 Max, the other one is the M1 Pro and you can see the specs on the screen and three 14 inch model, one M1 Max and two of the M1 Pro variety. One of them is the base M1 Pro and the other one is the top M1 Pro. So I wanna see if there's any variations between these two. When you look at this chart, you may wonder, is there a 64 gigabyte model that I'm going to show the result in the test? And the answer to that is, well, not quite. The reason why is because I have run some spot checks every now and then on the 64 gigabyte version and the timing of it, the battery duration and everything is very similar to the 32 gigabyte M1 Max model. So if you're kind of looking for the result for the M1 Max 64 gigabyte memory, I would say look at the M1 Max 32 gigabyte memory and that's going to give you a really good indicator of how this computer would perform. This being said, majority of the software that I'm running this test on is definitely not optimized for the M1 Pro and M1 Max or the M1 Silicon for that matter. Just because an app is now running native on the Silicon, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has been optimized. And this is one of the distinction that we need to make. And as I mentioned before, because these apps are not optimized, well, sometimes they drain a little bit more battery or they're not using the SOC, the CPU and the GPU quite as efficiently as they should be that I think once we see these apps from the developers being optimized, we're going to get even a better result from these applications and the battery life in general. But as of now, this is what we have. With probably the only app I'm testing in this entire suite, Final Cut Pro is the only one that has already been optimized. And that makes sense because it is an Apple native application. All right, let's talk about my test process and what I have gone through this whole thing to really run the test. And as you're gonna find out, this takes a lot of time. So pretty much all these machines, what I have done is taken it through the entire workflow process as you see right now in the loop and wherever it dies, it dies. So pretty much when the computer shuts down, that's when I end the test and conclude that if something has finished or it, if it has not finished. So to start us out, what I have run the test on is Lightroom Classic, taking the 1000 Nikon D850 file, that's the 45 megapixel Nikon RAW file, and bring it into the program, generating one-to-one -one preview and then exporting as a full-size JPEG. Then I would quit the program and then launch Capture One, render the preview, which uses a lot of the CPU and then export it to a JPEG, which uses a lot of the GPU power. And then afterwards, I have a 10 minute 4K clip that I'm exporting from Final Cut Pro in H.264, HEVC and also ProRes 422. From there, if the computer is still kicking and running, I would launch up Lightroom. That is the Lightroom Cloud version. And I would export the same 1000 Nikon D850 file into a JPEG and see how that goes. If the computer is still kicking, then I would quit that program, launch Lightroom Classic to export those 1000 RAW file as a DNG. And as we keep going on, you're gonna see that I have also launched Final Cut Pro again if the computer is still running. So 25 minute 5.9K export into H.264 and also HEVC. And lastly, some of these computers are still running after all these tests. Well, I would launch Capture One again and do a variety of export from Instagram, Web, Quick Preview, DNG, PSD. So I'm using a lot of the default that is in Capture One. And the reason why I'm using Capture One to do the last mile test, that last bit of testing, is because Capture One uses the GPU, which I believe uses a little bit more of the computer power compared to the CPU in general. But overall, I will say that these computers are extremely efficient. The one thing I also want to note as well is that on the M1 Max machine, the 16 inch model, I have to run three tests because on these silicon, the M1 Max, you can go in and choose between low power, the automatic, which is like the regular mode and also the high power. And we're going to find out as well if there's any performance variation between all these different modes on the M1 Max. With regarding the M1 Pros, at the 14 inch and 16 inch and the 14 inch M1 Max, for those ones, I run two tests. So one of them is the regular mode. The other one is with low power check. That is going to show us a really good performance delta between the two. And there are some interesting findings that I have. 
And with this in mind, I'm going to show you the timing and the result from these five applications or these five tasks that I'm doing. Overall, I am performing about 15 to 16 tasks total. And the computers, I can tell you right now that the 14 inch M1 Pro and M1 Max tend to finish anywhere between seven to eight tasks because it has a smaller battery. Obviously the chassis is much smaller. The 16 inch MacBook Pro tends to finish anywhere between 14 to 15 tasks. So the number doesn't vary much between the two and I'm gonna show that to you as well. But I think the most important thing that we want to know right now is that after being the computer this hard and literally going between all these app one at a time. And by the way, I wanna clarify one more thing is that I pull the power or the MagSafe adapter out the moment I click on import from Lightroom Classic. And then usually between switching the applications or going to the next task, it takes maybe about a minute or two. So those have all been accounted into the total runtime and everything. And here is the result. So for the 14 inch model, the total runtime, I have separated this on the top and the bottom. So the top one is running in the regular mode with the low power unchecked. And right below, you can see LP, that stands for low power. That is with the low power check in the system preferences power. And you can see that overall, the low power mode takes a longer time to run the task. And it's usually, I would say, anywhere between 10 to 30% longer, depending on the task, depending on what you're doing. But I find that rather interesting. So if we take a look at the total runtime in aggregate between all these machines, you can see right now that the low power M1 Pro 10 CPU 16 GPU one, that is the top M1 Pro processor, lasts the longest in this chart on the 14 inch one, and it lasted around three hours and 15 minutes. You can see that as we go down the chart, the low power eight core CPU 14 GPU is like the second you can see there. And this is the wildcard one, which is the regular M1 Pro eight core CPU 14 GPU that comes in at the third. And then you can see as it goes down to the list. So depending on the machine that you want to get, this will hopefully give you an indicator for the 14 inch model, how long they last and how much power they consume overall. Now let's take a look at the 16 inch model. For the 16 inch model, I have to separate the result into three different tiers. So we have the regular, we have the HP, which stands for high power and LP, which stands for low power. The regular is equivalent to auto on the M1 Max. Okay, so for this one, the M1 Pro does not have a high power mode, so we don't have a chart there, but we can see that in the blue line for the M1 Max overall, when using all these different mode, yes, the total runtime, there is a variation, and I would say it's close to about 30 minutes or so, but it's nothing that's going to drastically change the way how you run things. So you're gonna get about 30 more minutes of runtime, and you may be able to finish one more task when you run it low power compared to the high power or the regular mode. And as we can see, there's not that big of a difference between regular and high power as well regarding the runtime. What's really amazing for me though is that the runtime on the high power is slightly longer than the auto mode. So that's gonna be something we're gonna look at too and see the result and find out if high power is even worth going in to set that up in your system. All right, so this is the total runtime between all these machines showing the 16 inch one to like the longest and for the 16 inch M1 Pro with the low power mode, it can run to as far as four hours and 22 minutes. That's really impressive comparing with the rest. And still, I mean, if you just use, for example, the M1 Max in low power mode, we're looking at around three hours and 28 minutes. So the M1 Pro can definitely run close to about an hour longer when we're going through all these tasks. So that's something really interesting about these machines. Okay, so this is a breakdown for all the tasks that I have done. You can see there is a legend at the very top and each of the color represent the tasks and how long they take to run in all the process. I'll break some of these down individually too, so you can then see. But if you take a look at this, I am grouping this by the machine, for example, the regular and the long power for all these groups. And you can see how long they, how much longer they take. And I would probably say it's anywhere between 10 to 30%, depending on the task and what you're really trying to do with the machine. A couple other things to note about this chart is that as much as I'm showing you all these tasks right now, Certain machines, the one that I'm highlighting in red right now, did not finish the very last task. So you can kind of see there that these are still showing, but none of these are really finished at the end, meaning that it didn't finish exporting the 1000 files, or if it's rendering a video, it did not finish the rendering for some reason, and we don't have a complete product. So I just want to note that in there.
And then here's the same chart for the 16 inch model. And you can see that it is about the same with this one, the low power 16 inch M1 Pro. 10 CPU, 16 GPU running the longest, that's like the four hour one, which is really impressive. So when we add all this up, you can see that the timing is very interesting. Now, the other thing you might want to note about this chart as well is that you can probably say that I said that the low power one in the M1 Pro runs for four hours and like 22 minutes or something like that. And why is this one only showing four hours? The reason why is because this is just literally the timing that the CPU or the GPU is being pushed to the max. It doesn't account for the one or two or three minutes in between switching with all the apps. When I calculate the total runtime, the chart that you see earlier, I use the time that the computer is on and also included the one to two minutes to three minutes between all the app switching and also the different tasks as well. This is just pretty much the raw export time when the computer is being pushed hard. So we can see some good results there and feel free to pause this so you can see this a little bit longer. Now, with that being said, there's certain tasks on this one and these are all these Capture One export at the end. Obviously, it did finish some of the tasks, but there are certain tasks at the very last that it didn't finish. For example, that could be the DNG export. That could also be the PSD export with like the larger files. So it varies between each of these applications, but nonetheless, we can really see how much these computers can perform and how much you can really push it. And I also have a prospectus on this too towards the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, let's have a look at Lightroom Classic, which utilizes mostly CPU. And I say that with some tasks, it uses the memory, but majority for what you're gonna see in these preview import and also export, it just uses the CPU mostly. So let's talk about the one-to-one -one 1000 Nikon D850 file preview and let's have a look at the 14 inch model. What you're seeing right now is the graph cluster in the group of computers. So the regular and low powers, you can see how much longer it takes. And a lot of these, I would say it takes maybe around 20, 25% longer compared to the regular one to the low power one. Nothing surprising here, it makes sense, but it's also something that you have to be aware of as well, that if you put your computer into low power mode, it's going to take longer to finish a task. That being said, it is also going to allow your computer to run longer as well and also maybe accomplish more tasks that you wanna do. So it's kind of like those give and take. And if we organize the chart by the fastest export time to the lowest one, we can see that every machine, the 14 inch one running in the regular mode, is exporting much faster than all the machine grouped together running in low power mode. It's very interesting to see how the performance and the one-to-one -one preview times fall in this chart in general and how the regular and the low power one just automatically gets separated and kind of falls into place on its own. Let's take a look at the 16 inch model now. So this is pretty much the timing with the M1 Pro at the top and the M1 Max at the very bottom three. You can see that the timing is really close to each other, but the M1 Max tend to perform slightly faster than the M1 Pro. And that could be attributed to the RAM a little bit too, meaning that it has a little bit more RAM, but we're really talking about a minute to like 30 seconds faster. I mean, it's not really a big deal or anything to run home about. So we organize that by the fastest one. We can see that the Max, amazingly enough, what's really surprising about this shard is that when you run the 16 inch M1 Max in low power mode, it finished this task close to around 40 seconds faster than the auto mode and even that is close to 50 seconds faster than the high power mode not really sure what's going on there but this is the result that i have achieved in general i would expect the result to be more of along the line the m1 pro where the regular is performing faster and then the low power one is taking a little bit longer however this doesn't really quite follow the trend so it's very interesting there. Here's the 14 and 16 inch Lightroom Classic 1000 file one to one preview combined between the 14 and 16. And we can see that the low power M1 Max sits at the very top. That means it exports out at the very fastest, which is, I would say the anomaly out of this list because it is literally the only low power one in this chart. And the rest is between the regular and high power. And yes, I did double check my number, which I find extremely interesting, but that's what we got. All right, so let's take a look at 1K JPEG export from 1000 Nikon D850 file. This is the 14 inch model and I am grouping this by the laptop so you can see between each of the models, between regular and low power, how much longer it takes. 
and it is around 25% slower when you're running a low power mode. So that is, again, something to be expected. When we're taking a look at this chart, the fastest one tends to be the regular at the top and the low power at the bottom, following the trend what we would have been expecting out of the machine. But let's now take a look at the export for the 16 inch model. This is the M1 Pro and this is the M1 Max. So you can kind of see the timing there. And this is now following the trend a little bit more where the low power one is taking a little bit longer for it to render the export, which is now what we would expect. So what we can see right now is that the regular one between the M1 Pro and M1 Max stands at the very top and the M1 Pro is slightly faster. And the bottom one here, we see two low power ones and the high power one sits in the middle. I genuinely gone into these M1 Max, especially a 16 inch model, expecting the high power mode in numerous tests that I've done in the past to really jump up at the top of the list. But I haven't seen that to be the case. This is a precursor to what I am going to recommend about the high power mode. And I'm guessing that you know what I'm about to recommend. Well, let's continue on first. This is the 14 and 16 inch combined. You can see how the spreads throughout there. And this chart makes a little bit more sense where the regular and the high power sits at the very top and all the low power ones spreads towards the bottom. So, but again, this is the combined between the 14 and 16 inch chart. All right, now let's have a look at Capture One. For this test, I am using Capture One 21, and it mostly uses the CPU utilization on the import preview and GPU utilization on the export. 1000 Nikon D850 file, let's have a look. For the preview on the 14 inch model, group them by computer, regular and low power mode. We can see that this is around that 25 to 30% mark, the time increase when you're trying to do these tasks. And it's not really that bad at all. When we're looking at this from the fastest to the slowest machine, we can see the spread. And this is showing us something very similar to what Lightroom chart has shown us that the regular tends to stand out at the very top and the low power one is at the very bottom. Makes sense. The 16 inch model, this is the M1 Pro and this is the M1 Max. And because this task is still using the CPU, there is no big advantage between the M1 Pro and M1 Max because as I mentioned in my other videos before, once you have reached that 10 core on the M1 Pro and M1 Max, they are pretty much the same 10 core. Organize them by the fastest one, we can see that the regular and the high power sits at the very top and also the low power sits at the very bottom. The distribution is as what we would expect it. And this is combined preview for 14 and 16 inch model. Similar spread as we're seeing before. The regular mode and the high power one sits at the very top and the low power mode sits at the very bottom. All right, let's have a look at Capture One 21 1000 Nikon D850 export to JPEG full size. All right, so with this one, let's take a look at the result for the 14 inch model. And we're finding something a little bit interesting on the M1 Max with the 24 GPU version, which is the one down here. And what I find interesting about this is when we put this machine into low power mode, you can see that under regular circumstances, it is definitely faster. But when we put this machine in low power mode, you can see the time here, the time spread for the M1 Max in low power mode is very similar to the M1 Pros. They are pretty much within a hair of each other, which this is telling me something that's very interesting is that, especially on the 14 inch M1 Max model on the 24 core GPU version, what's probably happening here is that more so than just going in and throttling the GPU core frequencies and making it run slower, it's actually capping some of the core off and actually turning the core off entirely so that it's not being used to render, which is why we're seeing the performance very similar to what we're seeing on the M1 Pro models with the 16 and the 14 GPU version. Again, this is super interesting the way how this is, is working out right now. So we, we take a look at the time at the moment, we can still see that the low power M1 Max 24 GPU is still a touch faster than all the M1 Pros below or the regular M1 Pros for that matter. But we're talking about less than 30 seconds faster. I mean, between these two, it's really like 23 seconds. So it's not too much of a difference at all. And this is really a good indicator and it's telling us that something is happening with the way how the GPU is behaving on this machine in low power mode. 
And by the way, let's take a look if we're going to see something like this or not in the 16 inch model. So let's have a look at the 16 M1 Pro M1 Max. Not quite the same. We're still seeing the power distribution in a way that it makes sense to us where, yes, the low power mode is a little slower because the frequency may have been throttled down a little bit. But so far, we're not really supposed to see that 30% difference between the export timing in general on the 14 inch one. So if you're considering the 14 inch 24 core M1 Max, that's something to consider, especially if you plan to put the computer into low power mode at any given point. Here's the timing arrange from the fastest to the longest. And this obviously makes sense. The M1 Max, which has double the amount of GPU, is exporting faster than the M1 Pro, which has half of the amount of GPU. And ideally, as I mentioned before, for the M1 Max, I would love to see that timing cut down on even further than what we're seeing right now, because we have double the amount of GPU. We should see the timing half the M1 Pro, but we're not seeing that right now. We're only seeing a 33% improvement, which is the reason why in many of my tests and recommendation based on this point in time with software optimization, if you're using Capture One, just get the 24 core GPU version because it doesn't make that big of a difference at all going to the 32 core GPU. And I have many other videos that talk specifically about that as well. You can reference my Capture One video and you'll see that result coming to full view, exactly what I'm talking about. All right, let's combine the 14 and 16 inch Capture One 21 export. So that's what we have there. And just another reason why I'm actually using Capture One 21 is because I have the licenses to Capture One 22. I haven't upgraded a license to that yet. So that's the reason why I haven't used it. But if you have watched my Capture One 21 versus Capture One 22 video, the timing for the most part is pretty much very close to each other. So yes, the application is now native on M1 for the M1, M1 Pro and M1 Max. However, it's still not optimized. So that's where we're at. All right, let's have a look at Lightroom 1000 Nikon D850 file, JPEG export to full size. And there are some missing bars. So between these two, the computer was not able to finish the task. This is the 14 inch one. And the reason why this two M1 Pro is taking that much longer is because one of the things I'm finding out between these machines is that when it goes into very low power, for example, the battery state is in the single digit, the 987654, the computer tends to really slow down quite a bit. So my guess based on monitoring the computer is that the frequency gets throttled and also some of the cores get shut down on the CPU as well, which is the reason why we're seeing a much longer export time. Yes, it did finish the task by the end, but it was really just crawling to finish these tasks. So I find that very interesting too. If we arrange them, as I mentioned before, these two computer could not finish and all the low power ones is the one to finish this task on the 14 inch model. And this makes sense because the 14 inch model, this is pretty much one of the last tests that I'm able to do on many of these machines. There's only like one or two models in the low power mode that I'm able to run like two more tests and this will probably be like the two of them right there, the M1 Max and also the M1 Pro 8 CPU, 14 GPU version. But otherwise, I mean, this is pretty much the last task for the 14 inch one. For the 16 inch model, we start to see a spread and in a way that makes a little bit more sense. And you may say that, okay, so for the M1 Pro 16 inch is taking longer by close to like, 40% longer timing in general. Why is that the case? And is it because the battery has dropped down into the single digit, very similar to the 14 inch model? The answer to this question is no, not quite. The reason why we're seeing this spread on the 16 inch model is this, the RAM. So we're looking at the M1 Pro that has 16 gigabytes of memory. And the moment we bump this up, because Lightroom CC, the cloud version, is using a lot of RAM in combination with the CPU, very different than Lightroom Classic, we're seeing a time bump. We're seeing a shorter export time when we give it more RAM into the system. I'm probably gonna run a separate test with Lightroom CC using full power on the 16, 32, and also 64 gigabyte RAM to see how the spread is coming out. But I mean, the reason why I haven't really tested too much of Lightroom CC is because, I mean, let's face it, I don't really use that app as much as my pro application when I need to get work done. So if some of you do that, let me know in the comments so I'll make a video about that too. All right, so here is the timing rearranged so that you can see from shortest to the longest. And obviously the M1 Max is standing out at the very top. And the reason why this is happening is because the 32 gigabytes of memory, 
compared to the 16 gigabytes of memory in the M1 Pro. The 10 core CPU are exactly the same, so that's not what's causing the variation that you're seeing right now, nor is the battery, and I can tell you that. All right, here is the export combined in general, and this chart is not necessarily one to go by for anything. I'm just combining them for all of you to see. So let's talk about the findings. I already told you about the Capture One and the M1 Max 24 GPU version that it really just throttles down and cut down a few of the cores from being utilized when it's in low power mode. What's happening with all these other machines and what are some of the interesting things that I found out? So the first thing, and I mentioned this before in a few of my earlier videos already, is that on these M1 Pro and M1 Max, running it on battery versus running it on power adapter, there's almost no difference in the way how the computer is performing whatsoever, especially if you're in either in auto or in the regular mode. So this is a big improvement comparing to the Intel that comes before because the Intel processor for these MacBook Pros that have come before these M1 Pro and M1 Max are really power hungry. So every time you run the computer on battery, it gets either really hot and it has to throttle down the performance or the fans run really hard and you don't get as much export time because it is consuming a lot of power. So there's a lot of variations happening there. And I think these are much better power efficient machine, which is really something great to see. The other thing I also found out is that when I'm using Final Cut Pro or any app for that matter that dips into the hardware encoder decoder engine on these SoCi, the performance is exactly the same. As I mentioned before, between battery power and power adapter is the same, but also regardless of how you set up the machine, whether you set it up in high power, auto or low power mode, when it goes down and dip into the encoder decoder engine, performance is exactly identical to each other. So there's no task taking longer or anything like that at all, which I find very interesting. So here is the H.264 export for the 14 inch model. You can see that low power and regular is the same. And what you're seeing right there at the very bottom, the reason why the M1 Max is half that chart is because it has double the encoder decoder engine in the SoCi compared to the M1 Pro. If we take a look at the 16 inch model, again, the exact chart is showing us the exact same thing where you know, low power is taking a slight touch longer, but when we look at the M1 Max, they're only a few seconds away from each other. So that's not really that big of a difference at all. And even with this chart in general for the M1 Pro, I would say it's really close to each other. And to show us one more result, this is pretty much the exact same chart with the only thing difference being that I use the result for one machine that's plug in and I add that result into the chart. You can see right now that when I add the plug-in running on power adapter in there, it takes a slight touch longer. And again, this could also be accounted to human error, how fast I can press the start stop button on the timer or on my iPhone for that matter. But you can see that the timing is really close to each other on the 14 inch. And here is the timing on the 16 inch model. And I have the plug-in for this one for both the 16 inch M1 Pro and also the plug-in for the 16 inch M1 Max. And the reason why I have the regular 4 slash HP is because for the regular mode and also the high power mode, the performance and the timing is exactly the same, which is the reason why I'm using this chart. But we can see that battery, plug-in, low power, high power, this is pretty much the same. There are some slight variation in this model when you use like the plug-in. And amazingly enough, when you're running it in regular mode, on battery, it's performing a little bit faster. So again, I would account this like, it's so close to each other that I don't think that the result that you're seeing right now is something drastic or is showing us something that, you know, the computer is performing way better on battery or anything like that. It's just probably margin of error, how fast I can tap on the button and so forth. All right, so a few other finding is that when you use your computer in low power mode, it equivocates itself to slower performance overall, anywhere between 10 to 40% slower on the task, but it also gives you more runtime, meaning that for the most part, you can finish one additional extra exporting task in these pro apps compared to running it in regular mode. So if you need your computer to last for a very long time, and if you're gonna be on a flight that doesn't have a plug at the seat or something like that, putting your computer into low power mode is definitely a really good idea. So for the 16 inch M1 Max, you have the option to go there in low power mode. And for the 14 inch one, you have just a check mark. You don't have a lot of options. But the other thing that I also found out is that for the 16 inch M1 Max that has the option to go between low, automatic and high power. I mean, 
In numerous tests I've run, high power doesn't really bump up the performance. I've tried to run it in Final Cut Pro and the encoder decoder engine pretty much performs the same. And that's really the only app that's fully optimized to utilize these M1 Pro M1 Max. My guess is that if the software developer gone in and optimized the code, we may see a better performance on the high power mode. But at this point in time, we're not going to see a big of a difference between the two. So if you have these computers and you're just using it on a daily basis, my recommendation is to just leave it at auto or go into low power mode if you're gonna be traveling, if you know you're not gonna to get to a power socket for a while, that would probably be the best way to go. But otherwise, there's really no point using the high power on this machine whatsoever, at least from what I can observe from the creative photo app and also some of the video apps that I'm showing anyway. So let me give us some perspectives. So a flight across the continent of the United States, and I'm using Google Maps to show you this, takes around four hours and 55 minutes, let's say five hours. By the time your plane, which is taxiing from the gate, the door is shut and they have to turn on the engine, right? It's taxiing to the gate, it's taking off, and the time it takes to reach 10,000 feet, the fastest it can probably do at a major airport between LAX and New York, it's probably, I would say, anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes out of that five hour flight time. Same thing is happening on the other end once you get to New York, so you really can't use your computer until you've reached like the 10,000 feet anyway. So realistically, you're looking at around three to three and a half hours time in the air. And if you're really pushing these computer hard the way how I've been showing it to you in these tests, you're gonna be able to get through an entire continental United States flight just fine, running on battery alone without having to plug it in whatsoever. And this is constantly exporting it using the CPU using the GPU really pushing it to the max. If you're just editing your images or you're doing a video edit or something like that, it's not going to consume the power quite as much as what I have shown you in this test is to go in and really pound the CPU and the GPU hard and push it to bring what it can do. So obviously, if you have to fly across the country and you don't have access to power, you're gonna be fine. And in fact, some of the tasks, you can just open the laptop up when you land either in New York or LA and continue your export and your computer will still have battery left on there. I think that these machines, even a 14 inch one, are really impressive. So one of the things that I also found out in this is that these computers now have these smart charging similar to the way how the iPhone does it. So I have optimized battery charging turn on and a lot of times when I just leave a plug in it would just charge to like around that 80% mark and sometimes I have to go into the menu in the very top like click on the battery and say like turn off optimized charging it will ask me if I want to turn off until tomorrow or turn it off permanently usually if I need to go somewhere and I know I need the power to go up like 100% or when I'm running these tests it will hover around 80 but I want to go to 100 so I can start the next part of a test well, I have to go in there and disable it until like the next day and it will charge you 100%. But this is a way what Apple is doing is to preserve the battery and not running it at the brim all the time so that the cells doesn't deplete or loss the charge, you know, the total capacity that fast over time. And it's a really great thing that they're doing. And I think it makes a lot of sense considering how long these battery last. I don't think it's something that you have to worry about. All right. So we gotta talk about one more thing that these machines have compared to the other machines in general is that it has what I call idle efficiency, which is very interesting because these displays also has a variable refresh rate. So it doesn't refresh at 60 all the time. It can change the refresh rate depending on what it needs down to as far as like 20 Hertz, I believe. So that's also the other thing that's giving these machines longer battery life too. So for instance, I have these two machines right now with the image being static on the screen at the moment. I'm pretty sure the display is not even refreshing at all because nothing is changing on the display. And when I'm advancing these slide, it only needs to refresh at like maybe 20 hertz or something. It doesn't need to do a 20 hertz unless there is an animation, for instance. So this is also the other thing too that's increasing the battery life on these machines compared to the LCD of the past, which always have to refresh at 60 hertz or even more on certain laptops, for instance. Another reason too why we're seeing this longer battery life on these machines and this amazing power efficiency is not only just the SoC, but it's also the hardware and the vertical integration between hardware and software on these machines because Apple controls the entire stack. They can pretty much optimize everything where it needs to be. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. So if you want the laptop that has the longest battery life in general, choose the 16 inch. M1 Pro and you're pretty much can't go wrong with that. So it's really awesome there. But better yet, 
rather than just choosing that for the longest battery life, I would encourage you to do this. Go out and configure this machine based on your need and based on your workflow. So if you don't need to get the M1 Max, don't get the M1 Max. If you have, for instance, a need for the Max, but you can't carry a lot of weight due to some physical disabilities or um, shoulder pain or injuries or something like that, well, then get the 14 inch with the Max Sosi in there and don't worry about the battery life or anything too much where this whole thing spread. You're going to be fine. I mean, as we're seeing right now, from my perspective in general, it's just you can get away with the 14 inch in any model in a cross continental United States flight just fine without any problems. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. So here's kind of like just the perspectives on the 14 inch. You can choose many of the configuration. This is something that you've probably seen before if you're looking at this machine on the 16 inch in general. But here's a chart that I've shared before. I'm going to share this again. Feel free to pause this. I'm going to quickly go over this. Essentially, if you're using Adobe product for imaging, that means to process or go through an image. These are the configuration that I recommend. But the max configuration you should be looking at here is the M1 Pro. You do not need the M1 Max, especially if you're using the Adobe Creative Suite unless you're doing videos. That's the only caveat there. If you're doing video, you may want to consider Max, but if you're just using the photo suite from Adobe or any other software manufacturer for that matter, it doesn't really matter much with the exception of Capture One because Capture One has a tendency to go in and really utilize the GPU for export and also for rendering while you're in the program and so forth. So if you're using Capture One, I think the optimal machine that you should get is the M1 Max with 24 core GPU because we're not really seeing that big of a performance difference between the 24 and the 32 core GPU version. And if you're doing video, then I definitely recommend getting the M1 Max because of the double encoder decoder engine. To me, that is something that is definitely worth it. And we have now reached the end. So if you have stayed with me to the very end, listening to my thoughts about this entire process, thank you so much. This test took a lot of time as you're finding out when a machine can run for around four hours or on an average like three hours or so, trying to run multiple of these tests on the same machine two or three times can take a great amount of time. It's been fun learning about all this process and the way how the machine behave in different scenarios. But one of the things that I also want to add in and this very end here is some thought about these computers in general. I think that at some point in time, we have to decouple ourselves from the spec, from how long does the battery last, or I'm configuring this for battery life and these are my justification and just configure it based on what you need. In fact, I admire some of my friends sometimes that are not quite as tech savvy and they just come to me like, hey Art, I'm looking at this model, what do you think? And I'm like, that's gonna work great. And they're not even concerned about battery life or anything else because they just want a tool that will help them be more creative, do what they need to do. And these are the, very end of the day are those creative tools. This is the hammer and chisel to Michelangelo. This is the paintbrush to Leonardo da Vinci. This is pretty much the tool that you use as a vehicle to get your final creative work. Everything else is just part of a thing. And yes, it's good to know to be geeky sometime, but I think that we have a tendency to overly focus on these things. And I think that we go and focus on our craft a little bit more and be a little bit more creative and use this as they are a creative tool to help us achieve what we want to achieve, then we may not have to concern ourselves so much with like the battery life and everything else. And because at the end of the day, these are all great tools. It's how you use it that's going to make a difference in what you do. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I greatly appreciate this. If you have any question or comment, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in Art We Trust.